Welcome back, tribe. We are back with another video. If this is your first time ever coming across my channel or watching any one of my videos, I'm going to ask that if something in this video resonates with your spirit, go ahead, hit the like button, subscribe, share, become a part of the tribe. We would love to see you here. All the good vibes over here on this channel now, okay? Just want to remind everybody that this is a hot wisdom perspective always, as in my books, The Return of the Divine Feminine and the book woman is where we're going to be pulling today's information from so go ahead you guys get your books get you a pen and get you some paper and let's roll you guys really quickly i actually just came outside because i heard the morning dove making doing its call this morning and i wanted you guys to hear so let me see if y'all can hear this it almost sounds like an owl so listen up there's a lot of birds but i want you to guys hear this first before we start There you it's almost like a wailing, like a sort of almost kind of like a a a um crying with the gargle. I don't know if you guys heard that, but I just wanted you guys to hear that before we started, okay? Here we go. Today we're doing the morning dove, but before we get into her, let me in, let me say this, okay? I believe there's three things on the planet that no one else can prepare you for. I don't care how many classes you take, I don't care what kind of it, you're never ever prepared for it and that is the death of a spouse uh, or the illness of a spouse where they're no longer who you once were or they are no longer within your physical reach there's no way to prepare for such a loss that's number one. Second one is the loss of a child, a parent having to deal with the loss of a child. And the third is betrayal in some sense. I believe those three things um, will push a human being beyond their limits or can push a human being behind the, beyond their limits. It requires great strength and support and all of those things. Um, and so we're going to take that information, all right, and move right into the morning dove. This woman is so committed to her love, the love of her life, her husband, that if he were to leave her, it would be very difficult for her to move forward. Now, I know you guys could think of someone that you've known who maybe after the death of their wife, they moved on and got married. I know of two situations that I can think of, whereas the wife was already in the hospital and he had already moved on. And another situation, I believe it's in pop culture, I don't remember the, the uh, lady's name, but her, she was very ill. I believe she was suffering from dementia, I believe. And the mistress or the new woman was already living in the home with them. And so now, let me just say this, everyone deals with grief differently. Right, some people need to move on immediately so they can get over the fact that they've lost a love, um, and so they'll add someone new to replace that person not to replace that person, so to speak, but to replace that void. So, everyone deals with grief differently, and perhaps that's another video for another time. But I just want to set up the stage here. Elder Eden teaches us that there's one woman uh, amongst all of the five that we presented in the book that is going to have a very difficult time imagining what life could be without the one she loves, her husband. When she comes into the marriage, okay, she's already the morning dove. She's already committed. She's already loyal. She's already your ride or die, so to speak, okay? She comes into the marriage that way. You don't make her that way because she's fallen in love with you or because she loves you. Now, um, you know, she'll do anything for you. No, she comes into it already that way. Part of her existence is made 
of all of the things that she's already that she's already but also what she adds to her life so it becomes very difficult for her to move forward because you've been added to her existence I don't know if that makes sense but I want you guys to understand how deep this is you've been added to her existence and have become a part of her DNA, so to speak. So when she looks at herself in the mirror, she doesn't just see herself as a lone, single individual. She sees everything that she's worked for. She sees you and the children and the kids and potentially the grandkids. She sees, she sees all that. You've now been added to the tapestry of her life. To remove you from that is removing a bit of herself. She is the kind of woman that after you're long gone, she's never remarried. My neighbor, Debbie, and I miss her. I haven't seen her in a while because I uh, just haven't seen her in a while. But she uh, was the morning dove. Her husband had died almost, I, I want to say, Debbie, correct me if you're watching this video, maybe 10, 15, 15, 20 years ago, maybe, I don't know. But he had passed away, and when I asked her if she would fall in love again, she said, absolutely not. I've already had my great love. And I was writing at the time, and I asked her, what do you mean you've already had your great love? What if there's another love out there that's greater? She said, Crema, because that's what she called me. Crema, what do you mean there's possibly another great love out there? All of the memories that I have, all of the things, that, there's nobody greater than that. That's the morning dove. The highest of her highs is with the one she loves. She doesn't need to create new memories. She doesn't have a desire to create new memories because she's full. She's full. That's why it's so difficult for her to move forward because of the amount that she was able to um, receive. Okay, now it's very difficult for her to find um, love because, in in a sense, she's 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 tapped out to it. She's had her great love, so you won't see her going off and immediately getting married after she loses her husband, or going to date again, or it's going to be an entire process if ever she is to do that again. But remember, she comes in already that way. I've come back outside because I hear the morning dove still going. And so I decided that I'm going to do the rest of this video here so that you guys can hear it in the background. I'm sure you hear that. It's like a woo-hoo, woo <laughs> Anyway, the most important piece that I want you guys to know here is, is that out of all the five personality types that we're talking about, these people already come in to their relationships that way. All right? They're already that way. It is the essence of their being. It is, it is them. Okay? It's their makeup. All right? And that's why the elder tells us, pay attention to behaviors. Not what people are saying. What is it that they're doing? How are they living their lives? What have they been able to work hard for? Those are the things we are to look at so that we can make a really good decision or the best decision, I should say, on who we decide to mate with. Now, if a man, if a man you're watching this and you are looking for someone who is loyal, someone who is going to be committed, someone who puts her family first, much kind of like the Rue in a sense, um, the Rue would be able to move on after um, she's lost her, her great love, all right? The morning dove is not like that. It'd be 10, 20, 50, 20 years, she is still in a state of uh, um, feeling the loss. Because she feels everything, when she feels that, it is like ripping part of her soul from her. And so she's going to feel that thing for, if not, the rest of her life, right? If that's the woman that you're looking for, someone who is going to, long after you're gone, keep your legacy alive. She's the kind of woman that keeps your picture in the house. So when the grandkids walk by, you know, she's sharing stories of their granddad. This is your granddad. He used to be a welder, you know. This is your granddad. He owned a laundromat down the road. That's the morning dove. She's going to keep the memory alive, okay. She's going to be I'm committed to the stories and the memories that you guys shared. They'll never die. They'll, those stories will never, ever die. That is 
the morning dove. That is the morning dove, dear. A woman who organizes her life in such a way that um, she's ready to embrace the possibility of adding to her life a great love, one that she would allow to live on in memory forever in a day. And so there'll be mornings where she wakes up and she's not herself and she's more than emotional. It's almost as if you took him away from her today. That could be 20 years later. Or she could be cooking grits, making breakfast for her grandkids, and remembers. And there you'll find her in sadness and in grief yet again. And those cycles are almost always happening. She'll be fine, 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 fine. And then again, she's grieving all over again. Because she's lost part of her own self. All right? Somewhere in there is her identity still lays, but she just can't see past losing you, losing her husband, losing part of herself. This journey that the morning dove is going on through life is learning how to deal without the physical part of what she considers to be herself. And that journey for the morning dove it's a tough one. It's a tough one. And we don't know if she'll ever master it, according to Elder Eden. All of us are on a journey. That's the reason for the five personality types. It kind of expresses to us what our earthly journey is about. And just how rough and tough it just might get. <laughs> the morning dove, my heart is with you. Now, I will say, you're probably wondering, why is Judge Lynn playing in the background? It's because she recently lost her husband. And when I watch her, I see my neighbor, Debbie. When I watch her, I hear Elder Eden tell me, you're looking at the morning dove. Until next time, you guys, be empowered, be inspired, and be well. Bye.